Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Savoy for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. First off, let me say thank you to everyone for helping me reach 20,000 subs. I couldn't have done it without you guys and thank you for your amazing support. Let's move on with the video. So Savoy is an Italian nation even though it's not fully located in Italy. It borders some stronger nations like Burgundy and France and equal nations like Provence, Switzerland and Milan and some weaker nations like Saluzzo and Genoa. It also starts off with two subjects, Montferrat and Genoa and we will have a little event with Genoa coming along pretty soon. It is one of the most popular nations to form Italy with. Of course, first you're gonna be forming Sardinia Piemont with that beautiful, beautiful color, probably the best color in the game. But I'm gonna be honest, it is my third choice pick for forming Italy after Florence and Milan. But I know it's number one for a lot of people. So first we need to get some alliances set up. Now, Savoy will usually be able to ally both France and Austria at the beginning of the game. We can even ally Aragon. That's actually not something we wanna do. So we're gonna try and ally both France and Austria. Maybe some of them won't want to do it because we'll be allied with one first but first we are gonna send an alliance offer to france there we go and now we're also gonna royal marry austria austria doesn't matter too much but make sure you ally france you should be able to do it in most games and we're also gonna be allying some other nations like the pope and potentially venice but first we need to do other stuff until our diplomats come back so we're gonna go and set some rivals i'm gonna rival switzerland genoa and milan and those are the three nations which you should be rivaling at the start next we're gonna go into our estates and some of the diet you can pick whichever agenda is best for you. We're gonna give the clergy clerical advisory council. We're gonna give the nobility increased levies, aristocratic counselors, and strong duchies. Now we're gonna go and disinherit our heir because he sucks. And we're gonna give the burghers patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebt it to the burghers. In my opinion, Savoy is too big to give out the plus one monarch point privileges. You can do it if you want to. And then we're gonna seize land. We don't have a great economy at the start, but we're still gonna hire some advisors. Take a morale or a discipline guy if you have him, and take a diplo rep or improve relations guy if you have him. I don't have either of those, so I'm just gonna take this spy network guy. We're gonna hire an admin advisor later. Now we're gonna disband one cavalry regiment and build six more infantry regiments. We're also gonna give our ruler military command. Now we need to wait for our diplomats to come back. Once your diplomats are back with one of them, you're gonna start building a spy network on Saluzzo. And in my case, I can't ally Austria anymore. You might find yourself in a position where you can ally both France and Austria. Like I said, France is a priority, especially if they've rivaled Aragon, like in my case. And now I'm gonna check Aragon's rivals. I see that Venice is one of them, so I am gonna ally Venice. And I'm also gonna ally the Pope. At this point, you should have about three or four allies. France being the most important one. Now it's time to start advancing our mission tree and we're not going to be taking the middle branch this early because we are allied to France and we do need to take land from them in order to move down this path. We will be breaking our alliance with them later in the game but the branches we do want to kick off are this one, this one and this one. So now it's time to wait for our spy network on Saluzzo to finish building. With the other diplomat you can improve with your subjects or your allies. You should also buy indulgence for your sins especially if you haven't allied the Pope but even if you have you should because we do need that yearly papal influence. And once you've built up a claim on Saluzzo, it's time for our first war. Obviously, it's gonna be against them. They almost never have any strong allies. In my case, they are allied to the Pope, which can be considered a strong ally, but it doesn't matter. So we are gonna declare on them. In the meantime, start building a spy network on Genoa. And there we go, the war with Saluzzo is done. I just white pieced the Pope since I do want to ally him again after this war. And we are gonna be making Saluzzo our subject. If we full annex them, it's 18 aggressive expansion, whereas making them a subject is only 12. And we do want to minimize aggressive expansion in the early game as much as we can because we are gonna be taking a lot of high dev provinces. And we're gonna take all their money. Like I said, I'll ally the Pope again. And I've also allied Naples at this point too. By this time you should have a claim on one of Genoa's provinces, Albenga or Genova, but we are gonna be waiting until we build up a spy network for the other one too, and then we're gonna get ready for our second war, which is gonna be against Genoa. Now while you're building a spy network on Genoa to claim both of these provinces, in my case I already did it, you should be currying favors with France if the surrender of main war didn't happen. In my case it didn't happen. But if it did, France will call you in that war, and you should actually help them out. Go siege some provinces, stand on forts, fight some 
armies if England manages to land, you do want to help them so you can get favors with them. But if it didn't happen, just curry favors. And I'm currying favors to call them in the war with Genoa, because in the worst case scenario, Genoa will be allied to Austria. It doesn't happen too often, but it can so I do need someone stronger to help me out against Austria. That's why I'm currying favors with France. If you help them out in the war, you will have favors by now. And at some point early on, you will get this event. Geneva requests an alliance with Swiss cities. Basically, in the first option, we're gonna give these two provinces to Geneva and make them a march. In the second option, the ruler will die, they get a ton of liberty to desire, and they hate us, basically. Honestly, you can pick whichever one you want. I've went with this option before, so I'm gonna go with this one now. Obviously, this one is better, but it really is your choice. Maybe you want to RP or something. Thing. Now during your campaign you might find yourself in a situation like this. Provence being excommunicated. You guys know that the Pope usually excommunicates his rivals. And if you've allied him, he won't excommunicate you and even if he rivaled you, you should have bought indulgence for your sins so he won't excommunicate you. That means the most likely other nation that the Pope will excommunicate is Provence. And this might open up an opportunity for you to declare on them. In my case, France won't defend them because their ruler is malevolent. And that's basically the only reason. So if you find yourself in a situation like this, definitely declare on Provence. In my case, I won't be doing it because it might be considered unrealistic for France's ruler to always be malevolent and not be willing to defend Provence. In your case, even if they are excommunicated, France will probably still defend them. So if this was like my own playthrough, I would declare on them, but for the purposes of this guide, I won't be declaring on them. And once you've built up your spy networks on Albenga and Genoa, it's time to declare on them. Like I said, the absolute worst case scenario is that they're allied to Austria, which has happened in my particular run. Now, if they are allied to Austria, you will call in France, because you should have 10 favors with France by now, by building up favors or by helping them out in the war against England. But if they're not allied to Austria, you won't have to call in France. Or maybe you will, depending on who their allies are. In my case, I am gonna call in France, and I'm gonna declare for the province of Genova. And once you've basically fully seized Genoa, well, at least these two provinces right here, and by the way, I pieced out Austria for war reps and ducats, it's time to take what we want from Genoa. Now, you could do two things in this peace deal. You can take Albenga and Corsica, or you could take the province of Genoa. And there are a couple things you need to know about your peace deal. Basically, if we take these two provinces, it is a lot less aggressive expansion, and it is cheaper to core them. Whereas if we take Genoa, it's a lot more expensive to core them, and it's a lot more aggressive expansion. But if we take these two, Milan could declare on Genoa and take this province for themselves. Whereas like this, we're securing these two for ourselves later, but it is more expensive. Another thing is, the Italians will leave the HRE in about 8 years, so it happens in 1460. And after that, aggressive expansion will be a lot lower. So in my case, I am gonna take Albenga and Corsica for less aggressive expansion and less monarch points and hope that Milan doesn't take Genoa for themselves. Even if they do, we're just gonna fight them. I do recommend this peace deal, but you could do this one if you want to. And I'm also gonna humiliate Genoa because they are my rival and take war reps and ducats. And that's our second war done. Basically, we own Saluzzo now, and we own either Albenga in Corsica or Genoa. We've expanded quite a lot. It may not seem like much, but these are all very high dev provinces. At this point, aggressive expansion is starting to get bad, so it's time to chill for a few years and plan our next war. During this time, you could build up some more lightships and start protecting trade in the Genoa trade node. And once your war with Genoa is done, it is time to break our alliance with Venice if you've allied them like I have. This is because the Ottomans are gonna start declaring wars on them and that's not something we wanna be involved in. So the only real purpose of that alliance was their potential help in our war against Genoa. So just break the alliance. At this point, you could give out another privilege to your estates. I recommend giving the clergy religious state. And you should start deving Torino up to 20. It's not gonna take a lot. We're basically getting it ready for this mission right here. Once 10 years have passed, it is time to start annexing Montferrat. Tier 2 government reform? You already know. Strengthen noble privileges. While we're waiting around for 1460 to come around, we are gonna start integrating our other subjects too. By this point, you should have integrated Montferrat, of course, and I am gonna start integrating Geneva too. I can't integrate Saluzzo just yet. For your first idea group, I recommend taking economic ideas. And of course, we're gonna focus on admin. 
And here we go, the Shadow Kingdom incident in the HRE has fired. Basically, Austria decides if they want to let us go or not. It doesn't matter what you vote on here. We just need to let another year pass for us to get the decision pop up whether we want to leave or stay. And somewhere around this time, you will be able to fulfill your missions, like Prosper in Piemont. And I do recommend making Torino the capital. That will also automatically move our main trade node from Champagne to Genoa. And it is a much better province than Chambéry. And once you integrate Saluzzo and Montferrat, you will be able to complete the mission Unify Piemont. It also gives us some more development in Torino. And we get a claim on Liguria, which is this area down here. We already have claims there though. Once you do make Torino your capital and Genoa automatically your main trade node, we're gonna wanna shuffle our merchants around. Basically, the guy that collects here we're gonna make him transfer to Genoa. And we're also gonna move the guy that collects in Genoa to transfer from Valencia. At this point, you do also wanna start building a spy network on Aragon or Castile if they already are a junior partner of theirs, but it shouldn't happen this early. And once you integrate Geneva 2, you will be able to unlock the mission Integrate Geneva. It will give us some claims in Romandie and Switzerland. Now we can expand it in this direction too. Now, if you've integrated Geneva before 1460, as you should have, now is the right time to declare on Switzerland. Because the Shadow Kingdom event is about to end and we're gonna pick to leave or stay in the HRE. Now, we're probably gonna leave since we're not allied to Austria. If you are allied to Austria, you can stay. But since we're still in the HRE, we can declare on Switzerland without Austria getting called in. So that's exactly what we're gonna do at this point. And I'm just gonna declare for Freiburg right here. And there we go, this is our version of the Shadow Kingdom event. Our country is a natural part of the Empire. You should pick this only if you're allied to Austria. I'm not, so the Empire doesn't concern us. And there we go, we're out of the HRE. Now it is pretty unfortunate that some Italian nations have decided to stay like Florence and Genoa. It's not a big deal, we already beat Austria once, we can do it again. So no worries if this happens in your campaign too. And once you've fully occupied Switzerland, we're gonna take these two provinces from them. I'm gonna humiliate them since they are my rival. A nice little bonus right there, more reps and ducats. Now it's time to go chill for about a year. Now that we've taken care of that, it's time for our first war against Aragon. And I know you do get claims on basically all the stuff we've conquered from our missions, but the fact of the matter is, we're basically a lot faster than our missions allow us to be. See, we need to own Genoa to get claims on these provinces down here, but we're not going to be fighting Genoa again for another four years. And right now, we need something to do, so it's time to declare on Aragon. So just take your main army down to Corsica, and now at this point, Aragon may be in a PU under Castile. Don't worry, it's not a big deal at all, we can still beat them very easily. That's because we're allied to France. And as we can see in my case, France would join. And you should have a ton more favors with them by now. So I'm just gonna move my army down to Corsica and get ready to declare on Aragon. And once your army is in Corsica and your navy is in the Ligurian Sea, make sure you allow friendly fleets to attach to your navy. It's time to declare on Aragon for the conquest of Sassari. And I could call in Naples as well with the promise of land, but I don't think I need them. And your alliances will have gone down by this point. I am only allied to France and Naples. The Pope broke his alliance with me. You can try and find other alliances at this point if you're in the same situation as me, but I don't see any nations that are worth allying. Now I did make a little mistake here by sending my entire army to these islands over here. Don't do that, just send like a 5k stack. Now I'm gonna have some trouble getting them back to the mainland. And once you full siege Aragon, here's what we're gonna take in this first war against them. Basically, we're gonna take all three provinces on Sardinia. We're also gonna take one province in Sicily or one province in Catalonia or both. So something like this, like this, or like this. In my case, I'm not gonna take any province here because it would be too much aggressive expansion, so I'm just gonna take these three provinces right here and one province down here, Trapani, for example, so we can release Sicily. Out of here, you can release Catalonia, and down here, you can release Valencia. Over here, you can release Mallorca. You already know this. I'm also gonna take war reps and all their money, and I'm gonna make them end some alliances. And that's our first war against Aragon done. And now we do have all the provinces we need to form Sardinia Piemont. We're also going to be releasing Sicily in this war, if you've taken a province down here. Or you can release Catalonia out of here, if you've taken a province here. And now we can use Sicily to reconquest some cores over here. This wasn't too much aggressive expansion, but we are going to chill a bit before declaring our second war against Genoa, if they're still here. For your first age ability, you should take Justified Wars. 
And now, once a couple of years have passed, it's time to declare our second war against Genoa, or whichever nation holds the province of Genoa. Now, in my case, they actually chose to remain in the empire. They're still allied to Austria, but Austria would defend them anyway, and Austria's allies are also gonna come in. Now, in your case, you most likely won't be in a situation like I am right now, so just declare against Genoa. You will be able to call in France. Of course, you should have a ton of favors with them by now, but in my case, I am gonna ally Venice once again and see if they want to come in with the promise of land and they do I will give them a couple of provinces over here in the Aegean Sea. You know in my guides Castile seems to pick this option more often than not and once we've defeated Genoa of course we are gonna full annex them. It says a coalition will form but only Genoa will be in it. I don't even have to give Venice anything because well they haven't occupied anything. I'm also gonna humiliate them take all their money and take war reps. And there we go, now we can unlock some cool missions such as Conquer Genoa, it will give us claims in Lombardy, the Po Valley and the Western Mediterranean Islands. And we can also unlock Unite with Sardinia because we already own the provinces that we needed to take from Aragon. That will give us a claim in Sicily. That's cool and all, but we do have Sicily as a subject who we can use to reconquer. Now during this war I did dissolve my alliance with Naples. I still have a truce with them for about three more years but once my truce with them is up I will be declaring on Naples in order to get Sicily's course back. And during this time you should be building up your nation and preparing for war against them. And I'm once again gonna dissolve my alliance with Venice because I don't want to be dragged in those Ottoman wars. But I will be allying the Pope once again. And you will have to shuffle around your alliances like this when playing as Savoy. Right now it's 1474 and I'm allied to France, Castile and the Pope. I do have Diplo slots available, so I could ally a couple of more nations, although I don't see any of these guys that are available to me as good allies. For your tier 3 government reform, you should take decentralized bureaucracy. We are gonna become an empire of Italian culture, but we're also gonna be expanding in French culture, German culture and Iberian culture as well, so we will need to promote quite a bit of them. And now in my case, my truce with Naples is up so I can declare on them. If you weren't allied to them like I was, you may not even have a truce with them. So it's time to declare on Naples and take back Sicily's cores. They are allied to Castile and Venice. In my case, I've definitely had some unfortunate alliance networks in this guide. It'll probably be a lot easier for you to manage these alliance networks. Either way, I am gonna declare on Naples. I'm just gonna white piece Castile since I do wanna remain allied to them. And of course, you should call in your trusty sidekick, France. I'm also gonna call in the Pope. And once you have enough war score with Naples, here's what we're gonna take in the peace deal. Basically, every core that Sicily has that Naples owns. Now, I know I'm giving this example with Naples because, well, Naples is the nation that owns these provinces down here, but it would be the same process if Aragon still owns them in your case. And like I said, it's totally not a problem if they're in a PU with Castile. France will help you out in all of these wars. So basically, take back all of Sicily's cores in this war. And if you're fighting Aragon, on, you can take ducats, you can take war reps, whatever, but if you're fighting Naples, you're not gonna take anything else. We wanna keep the truce with them as short as possible, and you're gonna see why soon. And there we go, Sicily have all their cores back. Now we can unlock the mission, take Sicily. But we're not actually gonna take it right now. Because as you can see, this mission gives us a restoration of Union CB on Naples, which is very powerful. Now we don't wanna take it and let it run while we still have a truce with them. They might get strong alliances during this time. You know the drill. So we're only gonna take this mission the moment we're ready to declare our war against Naples and get them in a personal union. At this point, aggressive expansion should be bad at all and you should chill for about a year and get ready for your next war which is gonna be against Milan. And of course as soon as Sicily have all their cores back you can start integrating them. At this point you may also be able to unlock the mission Glory to Torino which will give us 20 prestige and most importantly a level 1 center of trade in our capital of Torino. You do need to have 30 dev in it and 5 buildings. I have 31 dev and I do have 5 buildings. A really strong mission and it enables us to go down and unlock an even stronger mission. One of the best missions in the game in fact, Powerhouse of the North. Now for this mission we need to have 100 development in the Piemont area which should be easy enough especially now that we have economic 
ideas with that sweet minus 20% dev cost and we'll also get another 10% because we're going to be taking quantity next. And you also need to have manufacturers in those provinces and a certain level of income. That mission will give us plus 10% goods produced and plus 5% admin efficiency until the end of the game. Like I said one of the best missions in the game and it gives you two of the best modifiers in the game. And by around the 1480s your game should look a little something like this. Basically we've completed a big chunk of our mission tree, started down this branch, went way down this branch and also the right development branch. We own all of Piemont, we own all of Romandy, we own all of Liguria, the western Mediterranean islands and Sicily as well. At this point you should be ready to form Sardinia Piemont. All you're gonna need is admin tech 10 and of course you should form Sardinia Piemont. Their ideas are excellent, their flag is excellent, their map color is probably the best in the game. They do have the same mission tree as Savoy though but it is a really nice mission tree. At this point you should be allied to strong nations, basically you've kept France the whole game, you are gonna betray them later of course, I'm also allied to Castile the Pope and Poland, so no shortage on alliances, and at this point you should have claims on some other areas like Switzerland, Lombardy and the Po Valley as well. I also have claims on some provinces in Provence. After this point you're basically gonna continue expanding in the same areas we've been expanding so far and you're gonna continue going down your mission tree. Basically after this you're gonna want to declare on Milan, take some provinces from them, be careful though they are very high dev. It's probably gonna take two or three wars to chop Milan down to size. Then you're gonna unlock even more claims in Venice and Mantua, down here in Emilia Romagna, in Tuscany as well and of course by the time you own all of Italy including your PU with Naples and conquered all the other provinces you're gonna be Sardinia Piemont and you are gonna going to be forming Italy. This branch down here does lead you to conquering provinces in Germany as well, like Switzerland, and it also leads you to conquering provinces from Burgundy, such as the two Burgundy areas, as well as Lorraine right here. And you will be doing that. In my case, Burgundy aren't in a PU under anyone. In your case, they might be. It really doesn't matter. But you are going to want to keep France as an ally, at least until you form Italy, and you are actually more powerful than them. Then you can break your alliance with them, start fighting them too, and eventually you will get to the mission Claim France which will give you a restoration of Union CB on France as well. So that's a very nice mission right there. And those are the three strongest missions basically. Take Sicily, Claim France and Powerhouse of the North. They give us some great stuff. For your next idea groups you're gonna want to take quantity for your second one. I recommend trade for your third one, quality for your fourth one and after that the other ones are your choice. You are gonna be Italy who is exceptionally powerful in any field and you can take pretty much whatever you want. But economic economic quantity, trade quality is a great setup starting as Savoy to Sardinia, Piemont to Italy. For tier 4 you can take administrative clergy or meritocratic recruitment, it's up to you. My personal favorite is meritocratic recruitment as you guys know. For tier 5 you are gonna want to take royal decree, especially if you're going for Italy, you may not want to take it if you're role playing Sardinia, Piemont or something, but if you don't want royal decree and you don't need that plus 5 absolutism, you should take general estates. For tier 6 you should take l'etat c'est moi and for tier 7 you should take political absolutism. You can also release and reconquer some other vassals such as Catalonia, Valencia, some subjects in North Africa you should be pushing into Tunis after this point as well. There are some nice subjects in the Balkans to release and reconquer like Dalmatia, Croatia, Herzegovina, Bosnia, Serbia, Albania, Byzantium especially, you guys already know. I don't need to tell you about releasing and reconquering vassals cores. And like I said, by around the 1480s you should be in a situation like this. Unfortunately, Savoy doesn't have any unique achievements. If you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine or if you're not that confident in your abilities, this save file in 1482 will be available to all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. Thank you once again for 20,000 subscribers, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.